So welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Time for responsible change. I'm going to get right into it because I'm having some problems with my internet connection here. So we have with us today three truly outstanding women leaders in no particular order. Sandra Sims, former judge in Hawaii state courts, the author, and now working on her second book, and a leader in community service here. <clears throat> Jelani Jefferson Exum, and now the Dean at University of Detroit Mercy School of Law, and well-renowned scholar, <clears throat> and Tina Patterson in Germantown, Maryland, <clears throat> entrepreneur, coach, mediator, arbitrator, <clears throat> master of many trades, and all really, really valued voices in what we're talking about today, which is from a woman's perspective, what's missing, what's broken, what most stands out to you as in need of help and guidance? Jelani, welcome back, any thoughts? Thank you very much. I'm um, ha really happy to be here and happy to join this conversation, especially with these really impressive women. So thank you, Chuck, for the invitation. I appreciate it. Um, you know, in the space that I'm in, one thing that I find, and I think it's a, it's a perspective that women don't have to be the ones to bring to the table, but often are the ones to bring to the table um, in institutional spaces. And that is... It, you know, we, we talk about work-life balance and I, I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm the mother of three little kids. I, I have yet to figure that out. But I think um, a recognition of the whole person and that, um, and that working in a way that, that um, recognizes that people have whole lives outside of what they do at work. And I think, you know, that's true, whether you're a woman, a man, non-binary, whether you have children, don't have children, um, it doesn't really matter, but it often falls to women to be the ones to step up and to um, kind of make space. And I've tried to do that in my own leadership, to make space to have to recognize the fullness of people in their work and to make those sorts of um, accommodations and flexibility so that we can really thrive in our spaces. And, and to me, that's something that um, can really stand to have more of a push in many institutional spaces. What a fantastic insight that in these times where we've become so disconnected from each other, to step back and recognize that disconnection is within us and our pieces as well. Sandra, Tina, your thoughts on that? Oh, I think she's made an excellent point with regard to uh, what women bring to the table uh, in terms of looking at this balance. I, I agree, of course, it never quite gets to the point of being balanced, but it is certainly something that's being considered. Um, I, I've been on with Louise before, and I, we've sort of began our careers uh, in law at a time where there weren't many uh, women and the notion of the of there being the concept of balance between your uh, family and responsibilities was unheard of and something you should you know uh, keep under the table and not share that with anyone because nobody wants to know about that uh, but I think that's one of the important things that's happening not just in in the legal field but in 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 corporate spaces in in in, in all areas of life where we have more women coming in, we're having a chance to look and see how it is that we work to, um, you know, integrate those values that we claim we value, we, we, we think are, we claim are important, this notion of family, but at the same time, you, you, you can't value family without taking into consideration, you know, that uh, women and, and, and fathers as well who are in the workplace have to take those things into consideration in how they operate and what they're doing. Uh, so I think it's an important piece that, uh, I guess it's women that had to bring this kind of to the forefront uh, to make it so that we can now be in a place to, to have discussions about these things and to actually address it um, you know, with, uh, with some solutions. I was in a uh, one of my other group meetings, and we did uh, with the Seroptimus, and we were doing um, a program with Elizabeth Steele, who works for Zoom and, and all of that. And one of the things that we talked about was um, she was asking that in lieu of her fee that we do a donation to the uh, child care center at the university. 
And some of the women in our group are, you know, older and I come from a time where the notion of having childcare at the university for faculty, for students, or even in the workplace was just like unheard of. And so they were really, really excited about the notion that this is something that we are bringing and talking about now, providing childcare for students in college. What a concept, <laughs> you know? Nina, your thoughts. Jelani, I like the way you framed it um, mm -hmm. as the whole person. And I, I think about this in terms of um, my role, both as a business owner, but also as a, a public official. Um, and we see this time and time again, where there's, like you said, Sandra, there's the public persona. And then there's the, I'm someone's daughter. I'm someone's aunt. Um, and it, that persona does not always is not always intended to be a public persona. Um, in the past, it was you know you're the public official. This is how you should appear. You go to events. You're you're by yourself. That you get a text message. That's a family re requesting something. What do you do? Do you stay or do you go? And if you go, how do you explain? Do you need to explain? Um, but it also has made me think that when you said the whole person, I was attending a presentation the other day, a colleague was speaking and she talked about, and it, it when, when she was explaining this, I thought, why have we not had these discussions before? I, and I guess I've been in a corporate space long enough where I have somewhat taken the transition for granted without recalling that at one point this didn't exist. And she was talking about lactation space. Mm -hmm. where you didn't have to go into a ladies room and stand in the middle of the ladies room um, because you needed to express. She, she's and she talked about this in the context of being an arbitrator and being in a space where there was one woman's room stall and she was on a panel and needed to use the ladies room because there was nothing else available to her. And it was just that idea and I thought, you know, I take it for granted now that I'm in a building that has a wellness space and that wellness space can be used in, in, in various capacities. Um, so it, it's, it's having that, that conversation that, that I think sometimes is missing and not shaming the person or putting the person on the, on the spot, um, but also the recognition of it and saying, you know what, we need to do this if we really want to have parity and in our workspaces, in our institutions. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been mind boggling. I, I'm gonna say this last thing and then I'll stop. I recall listening to a presentation that um, included elected officials and this was um, Mayor Browser from the District of Columbia and there were two other elected officials and she was saying as, Public officials, we sometimes need support. You know, we we need you to have our backs when you see the media tearing us apart, or when you see a story, don't just automatically believe it, or give us the opportunity, give us the space to be a real person, to be that mom, to be that aunt, to be that wife, to be that girlfriend, and and not hold us to the standard of you know, oh my gosh, you know, she. She, she had to get off the Zoom session because her, ch her child was crying or she had to get off the Zoom session because the dog was barking. She's a person. She, there's other demands on her life and not just this, multifaceted. Right, and, and just, can I pick up on that, that topic of shame? Because that's really, you know, what I've tried to, um, to think about is that we put so much shame on the fact of whether it's about, you know, motherhood and, you know, I love that you brought up lactation. I mean, I, my kids are eight, six, and three, so I'm just coming out of that, that phase of working, you know, through, through all of that and having to deal with feelings of, you know, do you, do you hide things? And I, um, I've, you know, I've been fortunate to have a, a good level of support, but I've made it very intentional to talk talk about my children, um, to talk about their schedule and what I'm doing outside of, of workspace um, when I was 
you know, nursing children and I had to bring pumping things to, to work. I would just, you know, with my first child, I was a little bit nervous. And by the time I got to the third one, I was telling everybody because I was like, why do we, why do we not talk about this? You know, I think it's important for someone to know how I've had to adjust my day around a pumping schedule. Um, and, and so I think, you know, I've, I've taken it as, and I see this as um, very important for for women leaders, um, but really it should be everybody's responsibility, but to really try to speak out about things because I think it helps to take shame away from others um, because it doesn't have to just be about, you know, being a mother and children and having children. It can be about who, you know, your just the fullness of your life. Perhaps you care for other people. Um, perhaps it's not even about, maybe it's just about the your own personal mental time that you need. Maybe you can't do that meeting at seven o'clock because you really need that time for yourself and that's okay. So just, you know, taking away the shame of saying, I actually am a whole person with, with full needs. And sometimes I need to make adjustments so that I can have, you know, some, some semblance of, of joy and peace and happiness in my life. And that's fine. To write that down. A whole person. A whole person. I love it. <laughs> with, I love with, it. I'm sorry. That's a whole person with, do you say full needs? You know, I can't, I can't repeat. <laughs> I don't know. It's all, it's all in the moment. A whole, yes, a whole person with, with full, with full needs, you know? And so. That's you have it. to take That's care awesome. of all of that. That's all awesome. and it's and it's I think it's kind of taken more women in in these fields and in these spaces to allow these conversations to even take place. And I hate to keep harking back to age, but I I'm old. What can I say? Uh, but I remember when I was uh, first on the bench, and this was like in the early '90s. I was in, you know doing uh, trials and you know at a pre-trial conference you do things like set the time and what time you're going to be adjourning and what the jury's going to do and I remember um, an instance where one of our very very prominent and you know well-known defense attorneys in pre-trial conference um, just kind of said you know uh, your honor I'd like to leave at four because I've got to pick the kids up and I thought oh that's fine with me. We'll just put that into the schedule. So we just told the jurors we're adjourning every day at four o'clock. Uh, we didn't have to explain and say because, you know, he has to pick the kids up. There you go. It's okay. He was a whole person. <laughs> it's exactly. And 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 we are learning to better um, to see people in that in that context to see people in that way uh, and. And I think that bodes well for us as a, as a nation even, you know, because I think more of that is happening in other parts of the world and well, maybe not. We still got a long way to go. <laughs> and you've brought out a couple of things. I mean, Tina, you're talking about Catherine Simpson, who was talking about a building which had no facilities mm -hmm. for women at all. This was not your neighborhood Starbucks. This was the world court the yeah. highest international court there is. And there was no place for women because there was an assumption that women were not going to be part be of that process mm -hmm. in any capacity. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that the holistic emphasis and insight helps us realize is look at how much more is asked, expected, and demanded of women now. To be a whole person is exponentially greater. Look at all that it encompasses. How do you manage that? Well, you know, I, I think this is a point that's really um, come out during the pandemic too. So there are all these studies, you know, in, so in the in the law school space, for instance, um, there are these studies now about scholarship production. So, um, you know, producing articles, writing, research, and um, they're showing that during the pandemic, the scholarly output of women um, really lagged behind that of men. And um, you know, it's not surprising because you think about the walls that were broken down between work and home. Um, and, you know, and so, so you find, you know, a person finds themselves in a space where they're working and doing all the things that they do at home, which often disproportionately fall on the shoulders of women as sort of our, you know, sort of the, um, in, in many traditional um, households. And so the, you know, the, the outcome then is, yeah, for, um, for a woman in a space where she's doing 
that extra, um, you know, the kind of scholars in this area talk about feminized labor, right, where she's doing that extra, that extra labor plus trying to work, um, work does fall off. You never get to, you know, you're not leaving the house to, to do those things. You don't, you're not able to, to, um, to kind of have that separation, whereas um, men were finding more space. And this is, of course, you know, not, not for everyone, um, but these were just what the statistics were bearing out that um, men were finding more space, um, you know, oh, I'm at home, I can, you know, I can do more work. Um, and so it really was highlighting the, I think what you're pointing out, Chuck, that being, you know, this, this, this full person um, really is, exposes, right, that um, oftentimes we have uneven and unequal shares of, of, of burdens in life, right? Um, and again, you know, this is something that's changing, you know, dynamics are changing in families and, and all of that. Um, but it just still still holds out, and the, the pandemic really really bore that out. And you know, we, we saw that in work production. Um, but I think as we ret are returning, you know, many people back to work um, in some sort of way, this is really a good time to <laughs> sort of rethink, yeah. you know, um, what we really should be doing. Like, you know, why are we, why do we have this work, you know, non work separation in the way that we do? That makes it sound that really ignores what's happening in the rest of your life. Why don't we just open it up and say, you know, we've all been working from from home with kids running into Zooms and pets and you know all the like. So we all know it's there. So now let's just let's just confront it and, and work in a way that yeah that that that's really realistic. You know. Yeah. So that's actually been a plus in some ways because mm -hmm. uh, we're now able to see that and accept that this is just this is just how it is. This is what people do. This is what this is how families operate. Uh, we and and for women, many women, we're sort of used to having to do more than one thing at a time, and for the most part, do it pretty well. Yeah. I'm going to pull the thread in a different direction because I think we do mm -hmm. we we want to do a lot of things well, and we can do a lot of things well, but there's a price that comes with that. And I think this pandemic has brought that to bear, which is the exhaustion, yeah. um, the, the, the sheer exhaustion of it all. And we hear the words self-care, we hear the words lean in, but I think the pandemic has really brought that to the forefront to what does that really look like? What does it really look like to say, I need self-care? Does that mean I close my bedroom door and say, I need 15 minutes, don't knock on the door. Or I'm gonna go sit in the car in the garage, don't come to the car. And yeah. you know, I'm, I'm giving these examples, they may seem a little out there, but no. it's that moment where I, I need to catch my breath. I need, to, I need to be still for a second and figure out what's next. I, there's a lot of demands on my time, my energy, and what's where am, am I going where I really need to be going? Um, if you have poured out all the water in your cup and you're thirsty, there's nothing left for you. And I think this pandemic has really helped, I'll say for me, remember that I, I need to leave some water in the cup for me if I'm gonna be helping others. I can't help them if I'm thirsty, if, if there's nothing left to, to sustain me. And, and it's that, it's the conversation of selfishness being self-centered and saying, it's okay to carve out that time. It's okay to say no and, and feel comfortable saying no um, without feeling guilt. And I, I think I'm of a generation where you don't say no, you, you, know, you say yes because you're supposed to. And that's what, that's what nice young ladies do. They say, no, they say yes, even though they painstakingly wanna say no and I don't wanna do it. But you say yes, just the same. And I think we're shifting that tide to, no, I can't do that. I don't have the capacity to do that right now. Um, if you need this immediately, I, I can't provide that. Here's some other options. Yeah, I 1000% I agree. I, I also think that um, leaders have to step in to make space for other people to do that also because one thing that I, I think you know, going back to the pandemic is highlighted that um, you know making space for yourself self-care in many ways can be pretty um, 
you're, you have to be in a pretty privileged position often to be able to really make that a reality. Right. Exactly. So for some, you know, I, it, it, that's difficult to do. Um, but so that's why I think it has to be on the, on the minds of whoever's in a leadership position in certain spaces to try to protect that for other people. And to say, you know, okay, it's okay to take this time. I'm putting it out there that that's, you know, if you if you need that, that that's that's okay. But you know, it, it's hard because, you know, for for some for some people, it's not. Um, they don't have the space to to be able to do that. They don't have the privileged position to be able to take advantage of real self care. Absolutely, absolutely. And particularly when you think about the folks that are on the sort of the front lines of, of providing the services that we now say we need to have uh, in order to get through these times, you know, like the grocery clerks and the delivery people uh, who, who come and bring your groceries and, and, and certainly, you know, those that are in the hospitals and stuff. I, I kind of, I, I have a neighborhood safely here and it's, it always strikes me when I go there. Um, the women who work as clerks are there all the time. And they have families, they have children, they have responsibilities, they have, you know, kids getting out of school or needing to have, you know, someone help with the homework and stuff, but they're there. They're there every day, you know? So I try to make it a point to say a little something, do something sometimes for them because, yeah, we just count on that and take that for granted that, but they're not in a position like some of, some of us, some of you, to say, I'm going to carve out this time for me. Um, our demands and our societal demands fall on, on a certain group, certain class of folks, and they're there. They don't get to say, I need, I need, you know, I need to do self-care. I need to go get a massage or, or something, you know, it's not available. And we have to be, you know, sort of mindful. I think what you made a good point, Jelani, about leadership being able to you know recognize and understand how important that is too and perhaps we're starting to see more of that um in some of these places where you're starting to realize wait a minute i've got to look out for my folks here too uh, i'm asking a lot of them but i can be mindful of what it is that they need to take care of, of themselves as well good point i really like that yeah so um, you know, those are those are uh you know some of the things that are I, this pandemic has really um, closed some things, opened some things, exposed some things, taught us some things. And uh, I, we may, there's a lot that's kind of messy, but I think we're going to learn some things and come out of this maybe five years from now with some different perspectives on how we you know, take care of a lot of the situations in our environments with our, you know, with our families, with our, you know, workplaces and, and a lot of that. I, you know, you guys are probably in a much better uh, place to see where those changes are actually taking place and how vividly they're going. And you're probably better capable of speaking to that um, than I am. But I think we're, 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 we're headed ultimately in a positive direction, ultimately, yeah. Yeah, I, I think with the, with the pandemic, it's, you know, we can take lessons and move forward with them if we want to, right? And um, I think it, it has provided an opportunity. There's so much was exposed, I mean, from everything, whether we're talking about, um, you know, economic disparities, race disparities, you know, when it comes to health and, and access oh, to care, you know, just, just across the board. Um, and, and I think, you know, so we, so things are front and center. And so then it's really just on us in our own spaces and how much we want to take from that and actually move forward. Um, like, so, you know, I'll give an example, um, in kind of the space that I'm in. So thinking about law schools and, and mine in particular, you know, and a lot of places have done this, um, you know, adopting flexible work schedules, realizing that, um, that, you know, sure, it's good for folks to, to, uh, to show up and, and be present at work. Um, but what's really more important is for us to have a functioning environment. And that doesn't always mean <laughs> that we stick to this kind of traditional um, work day. It is really like looking and saying, okay, what do we need to get done? What's the best way to do it? What takes care of everybody in the best way? And so, you know, those, those sorts of things can come from this, um, but it's only if we want to be in, if we want to intentionally grab those lessons and then put them into practice. <laughs> 
Hey, so how do women continue to move the needle to change this model in the ways you've been talking about? Well, I'll, I'll jump in and say, I think we keep talking and doing, you know, it's, it's um, but it, to, to Tina's point though, it, that can be tiring. You know, so it's it's just like we talk about having allies in lots of different spaces. This is another place. So this, you know, in the same way that when we talk about diversity and equity and inclusion, it shouldn't fall all on the shoulders of people of color. Same thing when we're talking exactly. about these other, you know, equality issues. Women, you know, while while we, because of just our perspective and life experiences and all that may bring certain things to the table, it shouldn't fall completely on our shoulders to keep the ball moving. So we speak up, we talk, and then you know, other folks need to come to the table yeah, exactly. and um and move things as well because it can be tiring. Yeah. And 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 that's what you're doing even with these discussions, Chuck. I mean, we've had quite a few and um not that it's all all women, but I think it's important um that there be this opportunity, there be this place where this can continue to take place. I agree with you, Jelani. It can't be, you know, us, you know, holding the world up <laughs> by ourselves. People have to join in. And I think, and I think also your um the generation to come, I don't know what do you call them, X, gener the next generation, I think, mm -hmm. is coming up with a different perspective on how um these matters are to be managed and taken care of. And so I think. Just from that alone, I mean, even listening to my own, um, you know, my own, I, I don't want to, I hate husband and call them children because they're, they're functioning adults who have some very strong views about, you know, how to, how to handle things, how to function and things. And, you know, deciding that I think I would rather, you know, work from home. I'd rather put, there's a work-life balance. I think I can do what I do here uh, in my own space. You don't necessarily need me to come in to do that because, I know what I'm doing. And so I can't, that's an engineer talking, they can do that. But, and then to have that view accepted and said, oh, I guess you can do that. Yes, okay, fine. Go ahead and do that. So, you know, that's that's the next generation who, who are simply okay with these changes and who can manage the change and change our world, change our, change our society, change our world. I think it's great. Hey, Tina, in our last minute, your thoughts? I'm gonna just say ditto what Sandra and Jelani said, <laughs> since I have a minute. I think they've covered it all. And it's been wonderful. No. This, is, this has been thought provoking and inspiring. I'm actually gonna take some time after this session and just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. We've been in session since 9 a.m. this morning until 5. Um, so thank you for the reminder. Self-care. This is exciting. And I, I am so inspired by you guys. It's just, oh, agreed. Agreed. It's, it's been a great conversation. And it is, it is something that you have to constantly reflect on. You know, and so it's been, um, it, it's been really nice. I'm going to do the same thing. Take a moment. Because my kids are, well, my kids are, are distracted. There you go. <laughs> Sit here for a moment before, before I let them know we're done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I wanted to thank you all. You've been fantastic. This needs to be heard. It needs to be listened to. I'm certainly going to send it to my daughter and my granddaughters and, and sons and grandsons. And, Support Think Tech Hawaii, folks. Yes. We're here for you. Doing great Take things. Take care. Great things. Thank you. Thank you.